Greetings uh, and welcome to my book a long list review of Sebastian Barry's Days Without End. I say this is a long list review, it of course didn't make it onto the official shortlist, uh, but it did make it onto my shortlist. Um, so in a sense this is also a shortlist uh, review. And this is a fabulous book. Uh, I feel good saying that, I feel as though I've been mean about quite a few books recently, but this one um, has many, many things in its favour uh, and I, I really enjoyed reading it over the last few days. So, um, story is that of two young men, teenagers when we first meet them, who are desperately, desperately poor in uh, mid-19th century America. And they effectively managed to stay. One, one is an emigrant from, from Ireland who arrived nearly starved in Canada. Uh, the other is a part Native American, part something else we're never told. Um, a very, very poor orphaned uh, boy born in what's now the US. Um, they decide to, the only way to survive is first to work as uh, cross-dressing dancers uh, in order to entertain miners in the frontier town um, and later they become soldiers. So it is the story of their journey through a very traumatic, difficult time as teenage boys, um, what it's like for them then to be fighting in the Native American um, wars and then in the American Civil War and then back in Native American wars um, and then uh, life in post-Civil War Tennessee. It is a book which lives or dies by its voice and its voice from the first sentence, certainly from the first paragraph, is just fabulous. It is humorous, it's incredibly blunt, it is in a form of not quite dialect, but um, noticeably not modern English, um, which in many writers' hands I think could become wearing over the course of the book. In Sebastian Harry Barry's hands it absolutely does not. Um, I found myself laughing out loud at various of the turns of phrase as I went through, which given that what he is describing is a dirt poor near starvation experience and then what it is like to be complicit in the slaughter of Native Americans and in some of the worst battles of the Civil War um, is, no, is no mean feat. So we follow John Cole and Thomas McNulty. The other thing to know about them is that they are a gay couple and Thomas is also Thomasina um, and there's a fair amount of cross-dressing. And this is interesting. Um, the way that Barry handles this is interesting because it's, it's mentioned repeatedly but almost entirely in passing. This is not a, a strident book about gay or queer rights in 19th century America. This is simply the way these two men are and how their lives work out and it's never actually a, a, an aspect of who they are which is threatened by their environment. Um, they are never, um, they're never threatened for, for um, the way they are. It, it's merely an aspect of who these two characters happen to be. So the voice of this book is fabulous. The way in which this theme of gay, queer uh, personality um, and, uh, and life is treated is also wonderful. What really stuck out for me in this book was the description of the worlds in which uh, John Cole and Thomas find themselves. Um, so they are living uh, in frontier country a lot of the time. They're travelling across the plains uh, in winter and in summer and you get these utterly wonderful descriptions of the violence of the weather and the beauty of the landscape around them and what it is like to be living in, it's very physical, what it's like to be living in this environment. There's a wonderful scene where they're crossing the plains in winter uh, with no food and the descriptions of the the frost coating them in white um, and the snow landing on people and the frostbite and the it's it's just it's it's beautifully beautifully written it reminded me of Cormac McCarthy in some ways um, it's very very beautifully written always staying within this one voice which is Thomas's voice he's telling the story looking back um, as an old man so the first the first half of the book roughly is 
uh, Native American um, wars and travels across the frontier company, uh, country. And it is a, so you have, you have the landscape on one side and on the other side you have these descriptions of absolutely brutal slaughter um, of the Native Americans in which uh, the two characters are absolutely complicit. And this is interesting in itself. Uh, it partly continues the refugee theme of, um, of so many of the books on the Booker long list this year. Uh, so Thomas McNulty, the narrator, is a refugee from Ireland. He is starving. He is also the man who is driving the Native Americans out of their homelands. John Cole is part Native American. There's a lot about who belongs on this land. Um, who has the right to be here, which fits with many of the other books on the list. It is not overtly addressing the theme of uh, racism in modern America. It, it doesn't in any way uh, put an explicit political or ideological slant on this. It merely presents this period in history extremely vividly and leaves us as readers to work out what we, how we connect that to uh, what has happened, what has happened since um, and the way that refugees are being treated um, in many countries today. So there's all of that going on in the first half. Then switch to the uh, Civil War, um, which I found quite an interesting section to read, actually, because the, the book I first read about the American Civil War as a child was Gone with the Wind. Uh, now, obviously, that's an utterly different book in so many ways and has, has various problematic aspects. But I did find that as I was reading this, I had the two books, because I, I knew it and loved it as a child, uh, I had the two books sort of running simultaneously in my mind. And that produced rather an interesting dy dynamic. On the one hand, you have this somewhat romanticised, um, confederate-focused um, book in Gone with the Wind. On the other hand, you have the, this, this brutal uh, union-focused um, book in Days Without End. So I wasn't quite sure how much of my reaction to Sebastian Barry's book was also um, driven by my um, sort of childhood memories of, of Gone with the Wind. But there, there, is, there, is, um, there, there are some fabulous uh, battle scenes, um, again, absolutely vivid, and having those juxtaposed with the battle scenes against the um, Native Americans is an interesting thing to do. So a lot of this, a lot of this book is about, not explicitly about, but implicitly about the the ethics of war and what it is like to be a soldier because we have the same people here who are um, slaughtering uh, women and children um, in the Native American part of the book and then fighting for a just cause uh, in the Civil War part of the book and then the book flips back again to more more slaughtering of, of Native Americans in the final section. And the, the complexity of the soldiers' emotions as they go through this is one of the things that I think is, is most profound about this book. Um, it is, the soldiers move between um, horror at what they're doing, exhilaration at the adrenaline of going into fight, um, their own fear and how they uh, react as a result of that fear in the battle, what it is like to be absolutely terrified and fighting for your own life only to discover that it is women and children that you've been killing. It's a very um, open description of what it must be like to be a soldier. There is no sense here that Barry is saying this is right and this is wrong. He's merely presenting this hugely varied experience um, almost without comment, uh, well, without comment, um, and leaving us to understand for ourselves how complex that is, whilst at the same time not in any way condoning the slaughter. Um, and one of, one of the structurally clever things about this book is that John and Thomas uh, and I've just realised that there's probably a pun in the names John, Tom John Thomas there. Um, uh, John and Thomas adopt a Native American girl and love her as their daughter. And so at the same time that they have been complicit in this slaughter, they are also um, both loving and looking after and being loved and looked after by 
um, Winona, this, uh, this Native American girl. So the moral complexity of this novel is enormous and was one of the things I liked most about it. If I had to be, if I had to be picky and say some things I, I didn't like so much, there is a lot of this book which is in the middle of battles. Um, and to me that became quite wearying. Um, I entirely understand that this is probably part of the point. Going into battle after battle after battle is, is an exhausting experience, it's an emotionally draining experience, and I, I completely get that maybe partly what Barry's trying to get across. At the same time, as a reader, at points I wanted more variety. Um, the battle scenes are just as vividly drawn as the landscapes and the weather that I talked about earlier. And so when you get battle scene after battle scene, there is just a constant brutality that is, um, that is quite wearing. It's about a bit like, well, being bludgeoned over and over again, which of course is what's happening in those scenes. Um, so that's something I would have, that's something I, if I had to make a criticism, I would make that as my, as my criticism. But overall, I think this is a, I think this is a wonderful novel. Um, it, I'm very sorry it didn't make the shortlist. Um, given that so many novels that are much, much less subtle in their treatment of refugees uh, did make, or given that one particular novel, which is less subtle in its ref treatment of refugees, did make the shortlist, um, I'm sorry this didn't make it as well. Um, but this is a book that has won a number of awards. Uh, in my view, they have been richly deserved, and I really enjoyed reading this. It was a it was a pleasure to read, not in terms of its content, but just in terms of the, the life with which it's written, the joy with which it's written. Um, and unlike many of the novels I've read recently, I really cared in this novel. I really cared whether Winona was going to survive, um, what was going to happen to Thomas in the complexity at the end. We know he's still alive because he's telling the story, but how on earth was Barry going to get us to the stage where he could remain alive at the end? Was his relationship with John Cole going to going to last the distance? Um, I really enjoyed this book. That's pretty clear. I really enjoyed it. I think it should have been on the shortlist, but there we are.